Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha We just sung the prayer of Srinivasa Acharya to the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Uh, it's under or Srinivasa Acharya presumably in composing this song he expected those who would sing it or hear it to know about the activities of the six first one it's not a these eight prayers are not a biography but they uh, summarize the activities of the six first from uh, and from the internal perspective uh, externally it seemed that they were writing they were writing you know, he wrote between them they wrote so much uh, collecting various scriptures studying them that was seen externally but why what is their motive in doing so is described by Srinivas Acharya that they were collecting and studying not in the manner of mundane scholars who uh, study whatever they may be studying uh, for the sake of uh, name, fame, glory or for some uh, misguided goal such as the uh, improvement of the human race by finding out more information but the six Goswamis had no such foolish goal. Their goal was Sadharma Samsthapana, establishing a genuine religious principles, fully Samsthapana, means fully establishing, making very clear. Sthapana means to establish, Samsthapana means in a complete way. Uh, and why should they want to do that? What is the purpose? So that is, uh, that is described, that is for the benefit of the people of the world. This was their motivation. Then uh, externally it was seen that they uh, had given up the association of all big, rich, powerful, famous people of this world. Jatva Turna Mashesha Mandala Pati Shening Sada Tuchava. They'd given it up, they're just thinking, what is this? It's just like some fly. So, the emperor of Bengal, just like that. You don't think, you just flip it off. It's just not even worth thinking about. <laughs> so, uh, and then what did they get in return? Uh, they were just, they had a kopin and kanta, which means a patchwork quilt. Kopin means in what in ISKCON language used to be called Brahmin underwear. Actually, that, did that come get translated into Hrvatsky also? No. And nowadays it's uh, just forgotten anyway. And uh, Kanta means patchwork quilt which your, which your grandparents in the village might have made. You know that is when the, when the cloth gets old and torn you keep it and then when you get enough you sew it all together and you make a quilt to keep you warm in the winter. Not For poor people. And uh, so it appears that they, from the material point of view, that they were insane. All what people aspire for, they gave up. Totally. And what people uh, want to want to give up, they took up. We find the description of Sanatana Goswami when he was he had a very expensive quilt. But understanding that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like it, he exchanged it with a poor man for a for an old, worn-out blanket. And the poor man thought, first of all, that Sanatana Goswami was making fun of him. And then he thought Sanatana Goswami is a madman. So uh, they appeared to be very uh, strange people. These are our acharyas. If people think you're very strange, we should think, very good. This is the blessings of the six Goswami. But there, for all their external strangeness, 
surfacing and diving in the waves of Gopi Bhava Rasamrita, the nectar of the... Is, anyway, you can translate it if you want. Znači, oni su... translate Gopi Bhava Rasa. Znači, oni su... What does Prabhupada say? Oh, it's not Prabhupada, it's the truth and understanding. But how does he translate it? The nectar of the love of the Gopis. So like this, uh, Srinivas Acharya, he gives a description of the external activities and the internal activities of the six Goswami. From oh, yeah. the uh, external point of view, they were, they were beggars, but uh, their influence is such that we are all here today. Uh, people who are very, who are most fortunate can begin to appreciate their contributions. Uh, I heard a comment that someone had suggested for this, made a suggestion regarding this. Uh, camp, that we should have less philosophical discussion and more kirtan and bhajans and nice things like that. So they might have considered that we could also discuss from the works of the Goswamis. <laughs> Rupa Goswami wrote so many, of this, uh, so many plays and poems describing the pastimes and dramas, the pa- pastimes of Radha and Krishna. How, for instance, uh, oh, there's uh, some complex and very pleasing to the ear and the heart discussions of how the gopis of Vrindavan, they became the queens of Dwaraka and uh, so many leelas he has revealed. We don't find them in any Shastra. No. But they are, we can say, implied in Shastra. Srimad Bhagavatam gives a description of Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, Mathura and Dwaraka. But obviously there is much more what's going on than Shukadev related to Parikshit in the short time. No. In the short time before Parikshit was supposed to leave this world. And even though Shukadev revealed the uh, topmost Shastra, Srimad Bhagavatam, to Purikshu, for this and other reasons, uh, one was a time limitation. He didn't go into so much detail. Another reason uh, is that the uh, sitting with Purikshu with so many people who were actually not very qualified to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, Rupa Goswami, he wrote uh, so many about so many pastimes of Radha and Krishna. So, we could discuss more about that. We could also discuss uh, other writings of the Goswamis. Rupa Goswami also wrote uh, several works in uh, establishing the conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the uh, declaration of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, this is elaborately established within Srimad Bhagavatam. And only in the tenth canto are Krishna's pastimes uh, (laughs) somewhat elaborately entered into. We find even uh, Sri Gita Govinda of Jaidev Goswami, which is maybe the most famous Rasik literature, that it's, it be, or Jaide begins that with establishing Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, so Rupa Goswami also did that in his works such as Laghu Bhagavatamrita. And uh, others of the, among the six Goswamis also wrote uh, or compiled, composed works establishing Krishna's supremacy and concomitant with that principle, the need of the uh, jivas to surrender to Krishna and serve Krishna, and how to do that. How to do that is described by again by Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and Sri Upadesha Amrita, and uh, in the Sri Hari Bhakti Vilas of Sanatana Goswami and Gopal Bhatta Goswami, there are more directions on 
how to why and how to perform various activities of bhakti and uh, thoroughly and in great detail Jiva Goswami in his Shad Shandarbha uh, has compiled the whole uh, canon of the Gauriya Vaishnava the whole um, canon the whole uh, catechism uh, so we could also discuss that we we'll need a lot longer than the days that we have here to study Shad, Shandarva. That, of course, is all, all the points there are covered in Srila Prabhupada's books. And, uh, yeah, especially in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, all the uh, necessary under, understanding is there that we require for becoming Krishna conscious. Now, the uh, whole philosophical understanding of Krishna consciousness is presented by the six Goswamis between them. So we may say, well, why have less, why have so much philosophy and why not just have nectar? Which uh, in, implied in that statement that is that philosophy is just something boring and dry and, you know, the Goswamis were okay when they were writing about the gopis, but then when they were writing about how Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they, some, they, were on a, they must have come down to a lower level or something. They weren't. They, at that time, there was no gopi bhava rasamrita. They were just in some low-class philosophical mood. That's, that's the implication. But actually, even to enter into that... Uh, very high level, Gopi Bhava Rasamrata, the yeah, the nectar of the emotional flavor of the feelings of the gopis. And something has to come before that. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matas sarvang pravatite iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samangita. Uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that those. Uh, I am the source of everything. Everything emanates from me. Understanding this, persons, intelligent persons, worship me. So I may think, well, if we just worship Krishna, then that's intelligent. So Even intelligent. if we don't understand all this basic philosophy. You know, if, we, if we discuss E equals MC squared, then... What is the need to discuss 1 plus 1 equals 2? So we can discuss equals mc squared. We can parrot what some, some writings, but that doesn't mean that we understand it. So uh, a realistic approach is to understand Krishna as he is, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, thoroughly. It's, it's not enough just to say, oh yeah, I accept Krishna. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I believe Krishna is God. But uh, Jiva Goswami uh, compiled a, a massive work in, in all aspects demonstrating how, how Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Awesome. And refuting various uh, prevalent misconceptions. So that is necessary. Because if we don't understand properly, then we don't understand. And then we get everything all wrong. And to other people who don't understand, it may seem that we do understand. But we can't fool the six Goswami. Or Krishna. The love of Krishna is not uh, so cheap that it can be have, had it's simply by imitation. So it is uh, necessary to uh, study and understand Krishna as he has presented himself in Shastra and as he has presented himself through the Acharyas who teach the message of Shastra according to the need of the people to whom they are ministering. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is our Acharya. He's not just our... As Srila Prabhupada made the point in his essay about Bhaktisiddhanta Sarsartaka, he's not just our guru. Here we are, a few people gathered in these hills, and we all accept that Srila Prabhupada is our guru. But he's not just our guru. He's the guru of the whole world. 
he is fit to teach the whole world. Some people realize that and some people don't. But his teachings are applicable to everyone. And everyone who accepts those teachings becomes uh, enriched and enlightened in the same way that he is. So we have to see how Srila Prabhupada taught them. He uh, drilled us in the understanding of Krishna as Krishna has presented himself in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, now, it might seem that Srila Prabhupada is different to the six Goswami. He didn't dress in the same way exactly. Uh, his manner of living was somewhat different. He didn't sleep under a different tree every night so as the six Goswamis did. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, he didn't live in Vrindavan. Apparently, of course, he always lived in Vrindavan. He actually, physically, if, uh, or if that's, I mean, what's the correct word? He was seen to be living in Vrindavan for some time, but then he came outside Vrindavan. But he never left Vrindavan. But he came outside, uh, apparently came outside Vrindavan to teach the people of the world with the same mission as that of the six Goswamis. Nana, Shastra, Vichara, Naika, Nipuna. The six Goswamis were very expert in analyzing various scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all the people of the world. So that's exactly the same thing that Prabhupada did. But Prabhupada, his presentation was the same philosophy, but somewhat different. It was necessary that Prabhupada uh, present, make his presentation in English rather than Sanskrit. It was necessary that Prabhupada establish a, an official worldwide movement and build temples, which the six Goswamis didn't do. Uh, but Prabhupada did this for the, for the same purpose, for the sake of benefiting the people of the world. And the six Goswamis, they were absorbed in the ecstasy of the... Their internal life was absorption in the ecstasy of the gopis. So Although we don't have any record of them saying, I am a gopi, yeah. or dressing as gopis. So Srila Prabhupada, he was uh, very extremely reticent or, or reluctant to... Uh, tell even his disciples about his inner life. He told his disciples, this is not your business, this is not your concern. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada refuted, as the six Goswamis did, he refuted prevalent misconceptions. Genial. There are perennial misconceptions, means they come again and again. So, in, in practically every generation, the... Uh, the gurus, they have to refute the misconception that uh, absolute is insentient, that all is one, one is all. Everything yeah, is one. Krishna, Shiva, Ganesh, Sai Baba, you, me, it's all one. <laughs> it's a common misconception. The uh, six Goswamis, they fought or they countered that misconception. Srila Prabhupada did also. The, uh, materialism, gross materialism, uh, took various different pseudo-intellectual forms in the society that Srila Prabhupada ministered to. So, uh, in the society that Srila Prabhupada preached in, and still today, Darwinism is a a uh, major factor in the uh, non-spiritualism of the world and built on Darwinism is Freudism and all kinds of various absurd isms. We were just discussing that uh, you know, what's, what's more absurd, the idea that everything is one which requires three words to say it and how many in Harvatsky? Three words. Or that uh, everything has come by chance and man has descended from monkeys. What is the most absurd 
It's difficult to say. But such theories are considered to be axiomatic, infallible truth by various grades of deluded scholars. And uh, the, the mass of people take this for granted so that they can show scientific documentaries on TV uh, making matter-of-fact statements about how we descended from monkeys. Or as I read in an Encyclopedia Britannica entry, you've all heard of Encyclopedia Britannica, it is the Shastra of the intellectual class of people. Anything in there is considered authorized. So there it describes how uh, in, a lo- in a time, a long, long time ago, as all good fairy tales begin, the apes just used to run around on their all fours. But some of them who were taller, they, were, they would stand up and reach up to the fruit on the lower branches of the tree. And these apes flourished and one of them eventually became Charles Darwin. I mean, I'm paraphrasing. This is not exactly what it says. This is, this is the gist of it. So, so what's more absurd? This or that everything is one. I am you and you are me. And we are all together sitting on a cornflake. This is, I'm quoting from the great philosopher John Lennon. I am you and you are me and we are all together sitting on a cornflake, <laughs> waiting for the sun to come. If the sun don't come, we'll get a tan, sun tan, we'll get a tan from sitting in the English rain. So this is uh, words of wisdom from John Lennon. See, I was learning Shasta <laughs> even before. <laughs> so this is Asat Shastra. But it's very influential, John Lennon. John Lennon. John Lennon said that John. you are me and I, I am you and you are me and we are all together. <laughs> Strains of Shankaracharya. Strain, you know what that means? Like it's like a, a subtle, uh, how can I say it? It's, <laughs> hmm? it's, a, it's a subtle reflection, you could say. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada preached against the uh, idea that all is one. He also preached against Darwinism. Srila Prabhupada's refutation of Darwinism is exactly in the line of the six Goswami. In between, there have been so many Acharyas. They have all preached the same message. Uh, According to the need of the time, as far as I know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the first to, first Gorya or any of any Vaishnava Acharya to discuss the philosophy of Islam. Not in great detail, but he took up some of the basic points and uh, in his novel Jaiva Dharma there was a there's a discussion between Vaishnavas and Muslims, philosophical discussion. Uh, so this is required. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, who uh, followed in, in, in the time period just immediately following on from the six Goswamis or contemporary but coming just after or just at the end of their time. He presented the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and in his Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, he worked within the fabric of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pastimes. He uh, embroidered the tapestry of Gorya Siddhanta. So uh, all Gauriyas since that time have understood the teachings of the six Goswamis of the Shatshandharva through the teachings of Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami which are the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Within Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami before he describes the past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he establishes the position of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And within the text of Chaitanya Charitamrita, within all the past times are, are, are interwoven the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because they're inseparable. 
because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching the the philosophy by which one can understand Krishna. So uh, Krishna as Kaviraj Goswami, one of the uh, innumerable important statements he made in Chaitanya Charitamrita is as follows. Siddhanta Baliya Chitena Karaha Alash Iha Hoite Krishna Lage Sudhiramanash which means do not be lazy in trying to understand the proper conclusions of Shastra. Because by such understanding one's mind becomes very strongly attached to Krishna. Which suggests that if we don't, if we are lazy then in this matter then we won't properly, we won't be strongly attached to Krishna. Which Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur took up. He took up the other side of this statement. Siddhanta Aloshjan Anarata Tacharana he stated that one who is lazy in understanding Siddhanta or the proper understanding philosophical conclusions based on Shastra, such a person cannot or does not give up anarthas. Anartha means that which is not necessary. It is uh, or without that which lacks meaning, obstacle in our understanding. So uh, that is why this camp is not just bhajans and nice stories. No doubt everyone would be very happy if it was just bhajans and nice stories. But uh, the aim of those who are attempting to follow the six Goswamis and all the Acharyas up to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada is within our capacity nana shastra vichara naika nipuno sadharma samsthapako lokanam hita to uh, understand the philosophical conclusions from shastra to establish what are the proper principles of religion for the benefit of the people in the, of the world so uh, if we're not if we are lazy to understand philosophical conclusions, then we don't give up an artist. We remain on the material platform, even if we're chanting Hare Krishna. We may be chanting Hare Krishna, but if we don't understand who is Krishna, if we don't make any effort to do so, then we remain on the mundane platform. And uh, in my youth, I had plenty of exposure to this among the Sahajya, Prakriti Sahajyas of Bangladesh, who uh, actually liked to chant Hare Krishna very much and very uh, musically adept in doing so. And uh, at the same time, uh, at least as much attached to, for instance, eating fish as chanting Hare Krishna, which uh, I couldn't work it out at all when I first went there. And it still seems like a shocking fact. But the reason is because they're not exposed to the proper understanding of Krishna consciousness. Krishna. And their, their whole religious ethos is one that it's not required to understand any such philosophy. Just chant Hare Krishna. That's everything. And that if you chant Hare Krishna, well, that's everything. So you don't need to follow anything else. We find that Srila Prabhupada within his books spoke uh, so much against the Mayavadis and Prakriti Sahajiyas and we might think, well, it's some kind of... Uh, just like in uh, the Balkans, you have running through generations, like feuds between different families. So you might think it's something like that. The Goryas or the, this line of Vaishnavas against another line of Vaishnavas. It's like some kind of... What do they call that? It's like inherited, inherited hatred or something just like Croatians don't like Serbs, right? And what's wrong with Serbs? They're Orthodox and they're Serbs. And that's enough. There's no to need to say anything more. If they're Everybody Orthodox and they're Serbs, they must be, ba- they must be bad, right? Does it make any sense? No, there's no understanding. It's just a, it's just a sentiment. And not a good sentiment. So it wasn't that Prabhupada had some kind, he was raising a Vaishnava family and then like, just like in, in the, in the childhood you might be told that well Serbs are all bad 
And then you get, so in the Vaishnava time, you grow up hearing that Mayavadis are all bad. You don't even know what a Mayavadi is, but anyone called a Mayavadi means they must be bad. Mm-hmm. So maybe we should rise to a higher Vaishnava platform and uh, just love everyone and not make any distinction between different kinds of people. Just love everyone, etc., etc., etc. So it's... Uh, well, here's another quote from the great philosopher John Lennon. Life's easy with your eyes closed. Something like that. I didn't, didn't learn my shlokas that well. Actually, I heard this when I was in Iskon. Prithu Prabhu. Living's easy with eyes closed. So, uh, yeah, in this camp we are trying to, for that Agyanatimirandasya, Agyananjana Shalaka, Chakshurun Nilita, opening up the eyes, <laughs> with the eyes, with the, with the uh, Gyananjana, the, uh, what's that called? The color, no, well it's, uh, Anjana means a kind of cream or something. Ointment. Ointment, ointment, yeah, the ointment of knowledge. Shalaka is an instrument. For applying that. So otherwise the situation is pashan api na pashati. We see but we don't see. We may physically see but we, real seeing means to understand. And uh, without that, without proper understanding, then we simply become full of anarthas at an individual level and at an institutional level also. A question was raised this morning about what would Srila Prabhupada think if he were to come now? Mm-hmm. Well, of course, Srila Prabhupada is here now, as much as we want him to be. Uh, the spiritual master is always present by his teachings. If we follow his teachings, he's present. If we don't follow his teachings, he's not present. And if we don't follow Prabhupada's teachings, then again we come to the darkness of ignorance because he saved us from the darkness of ignorance. He saved us from the darkness of ignorance by giving us systematic knowledge or, or understanding of what is real. Reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. That is the message of Srimad Bhagavatam and of all genuine preachers of Srimad Bhagavatam. That comes first. That's in that stated in which verse of Bhagavatam? It's in second verse, right? Second verse of the first chapter. And then in the third verse, Pivata Bhagavata Rasamalayam. Go on. Tasting, the, oh, you are rasic devotees. Go on tasting the rasa, bhakti rasa. But first, there is establishment. Vedam vastavam atra vastu. This is the actual subject of the Vedas. Reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Unless we're able, by understanding the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam, to distinguish reality from illusion then what is real we take to be illusion and what is illusion we take to be real. Just like Duryodhana in the <coughs> palace created by Mayadhanava, he took land to be water and water to be land and fell in the water. So unless we can distinguish between reality and illusion, then we will take that with the, we will take the jararas or the mundane representation of rasa to be the real thing. And the actual spiritual teachings we will think are Monday. So it's very clear from the teachings of Srila Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and all our recent Acharyas, that persons who prematurely uh, and immaturely in, in public discuss highly intimate pastimes of Krishna they may appear to be on the actual spiritual platform, but actually they're on the mundane platform. And those who uh, discuss the topics which are required to understand, to attain the qualification, to enter into that higher level, they, although... Yeah, okay, that's quite a lot to start off with. They are... uh, Actually, on the spiritual path, because their mission is sadharma samstapan lokita. They're presenting the uh, what is required for the benefit of the world. It is a great uh, disservice to the world to present to the world the uh, inner pastimes of Krishna 
without first presenting the understanding by which we can appreciate their truly spiritual nature. So, so if we can very clearly understand our position as the servant of Krishna, as the eternal servant of Krishna, from this all other understanding will come naturally. But if we're not fully fixed in this, uh, then we'll misunderstand everything. So the question of would Srila Prabhupada be satisfied um, well, without getting into a lot of controversial topics, I think it's uh, pretty safe to say that no. We need not me- that no. wasn't meant as a joke, it was just meant as a factual statement. Like, so I wasn't you know, trying to present myself as a maverick. Do you know what a maverick means? Like some kind of someone who takes pleasure in being unorthodox. But there are, sorry to say, there are many strange things going on within our movement. Many things which, uh, even if we have a basic understanding of what Srila Prabhupada taught, we should be able to understand this is not Vaishnavism. This is not pure devotion. Somehow there seems to be a, a circumventing of all that Prabhupada taught us. So, 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 just, you know, so, avoiding so, going around it. Um, it might be because the, the, our movement has changed so demographically so. from being a, an ashram based movement to a congregational based movement and uh, most devotees they don't have a, or many devotees don't have regular contact with temples and they have a tough life. It's very difficult in the modern age to just even maintain, to, to have enough income to maintain a family. And uh, generally people look to religion for some kind of relief from their immediate suffering. And philosophy is heavy stuff. It requires us to apply our mind and intelligence, which uh, is already exhausted from struggling in the material world. And plus the whole way of life uh, puts us in the lower modes of nature. And to understand this spiritual philosophy, one has to at least be in the uh, sattva gun, the mode of goodness. And... uh, (coughs) It, it just seem it might just seem to be a lot more effective just to get people to chant Hare Krishna and be happy and be satisfied on that platform, and, and that certainly is the beginning platform that Srila Prabhupada uh, recommended. Invite people, uh, get them to join with us, chanting and dancing, give them prasadam. But if we are to become serious about Krishna consciousness, then we have to practice seriously. It's not enough to remain at the uh, first time visitor level forever. If we are to take to Krishna consciousness, we have to uh, study Srila Prabhupada's book seriously, as he was very serious to compose them and to understand the teachings within them. So uh, people who take to religious life, it's generally understood that they're good people or they want to be good people. In this nasty world where everyone is trying to uh, get ahead of everyone else, it's a rare person who wants to be good. Of course, in this part of the world, you may not have that uh, intense competitiveness as in other parts of the world. Maybe uh, Hanuman Prabhu is exposed somewhat to that culture through his work on the international work on the internet. But like, uh, in Croatia, along the coast, it's not, it's not a highly competitive kind of culture because you know, the Germans come and you rent out the room and that's it. You get your money and there's no, there's no co- career development. It's just a straightforward. You rent out the room or you have your bar and people come and you sell them sandwiches and there's no career or so. There's no gross competitiveness. Or in this part of Croatia, uh, you know, people, it's village life. There's also no career. What's that? Career climbing. Rat race. Building. Rat race. Career building. Yeah, it's, uh, where's the career in growing carrots? You know? <laughs> well, it could be. You know, people. Let's level the land. Bring in the combine harvesters. And 
but that didn't happen here, yeah. And generally in what was the ex-communist and socialist world, that uh, highly competitive atmosphere hasn't come in in full yet, even after one generation of uh, liberation from communist and socialist regimes got liberated from Tito and, and became a slave of IBM and of McDonald's and Coca-Cola and all these kinds of things. Anyway, uh, yeah, in India definitely it's a very competitive society. Very horrible how culture has changed to being so competitive and nasty. You know all about that, right? Chitta Hari wasted eight years of his life as an up-and-coming <coughs> computer professional. Actually, you're never really up-and-coming because you always stayed down, right? You never really wanted to go up. You just wanted to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> but uh, even without all that competitiveness, it's still just a struggle just to pay the bills. Life is a great struggle. From uh, Don't photo me now. I'm scratching my nose. I have to look. Spiritual. Can <laughs> translate that. <clears throat> so people, I, I'm just trying to analyze some reasons why, why on earth don't we do what we're supposed to do in our movement, which is study Prabhupada's books and teach according to Prabhupada's books. There's really no reason not to. There's every reason to do so, but somehow or other it's become uh, unpopular. At least we see we have all kinds of, at this kind of camp, it's usually seminars are on practically anything except topics in Prabhupada's books. And you know, like I was saying, uh, rising late is the norm, uh, dressing in all kinds of ways is the norm. So it becomes something like a social camp, or a social get together. Uh, the mood is relaxed, not okay. heavy. Okay. Feeling a little heavy now. Okay, okay. Uh, that was uh, that was letting the steam out from the pressure cooker. A little joke. <laughs> a few jokes down. here to, to lighten it up. Otherwise, it gets too heavy. <laughs> We have to get them to come back again because, as I got a very good realization from Divya Prabhanda Prabhu this afternoon, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavita. How can we be free from dhanam, janam, sundari, and kavi, all the nice things, flowery things? Just speak the truth, that's all. That's all you have to do. And all the people, they won't want to give you money, you won't get followers, and beautiful women won't come at you and say, Ah! <laughs> and uh, you won't feel nice. <laughs> there you are, there's the solution. So, what do we want? That's the question it comes down to. As uh, that was... When... Giriraj Maharaj, before he surrendered to Prabhupada, he described, he came to Prabhupada, uh, somewhat attracted to an Indian Swami, but full of impersonalistic ideas. And Giriraj at that time, a student, asked, I can't even remember what the question he asked Prabhupada was, but I remember Prabhupada's answer. Prabhupada's answer was, what do you want? Do you want to serve God or do you want to be God? That question changed his life. So what do we want? What do you want? Based on what you say, should I speak? We want dhanam, janam, sundari. Okay, then I'll speak. Should I speak like that? We should speak the truth. It may sound presumptuous to say that we can speak the truth, but we can say very clearly, we know what the truth is, we have understood from Rupa Goswami and all the Acharyas to Prabhupada, and we shall say that. And if no one listens, 
So no one speaking, as Prabhupada said, if no one comes, as, as Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur said, if no one comes, you speak to the walls. And that's what Prabhupada did in New York City. No one was coming, he spoke to the walls. There was a tape recorder there too. And in the uh, recording, that came out as the introduction to Bhagavad Gita as it is. So Prabhupada spoke to the walls and now the whole world is resounding with the sound of Bhagavad Gita as it is. And we're distributing these books all over the world and people are appreciating. Narayan Pandit Prabhu told me yesterday. It's actually, he said it's actually much easier to distribute Bhagavad Gita than to distribute small books. Because small books, people think it's just something insignificant. You're a beggar or something. You just want a few pennies. No when teacher. they see Bhagavad Gita, they can immediately understand this is something very serious and, and meaningful. In a world where there is no meaning, people's lives are meaningless, as we heard this morning in the class. People can immediately appreciate this is something. There's uh, Parameshwar Prabhu. Maybe you've seen his name in the Sankirtan newsletter in America. Parameshwar Prabhu, America. I've seen him distributing, it's amazing, that uh, in San Diego on uh, Saturday night, all the devotees go out on Harinam Sankirtan, GBC, Temple President, everyone, one or two Pajaris stay back. So, we were having a Brahmachari summer at that time, Parameshra Prabhu was with us. And you, see, you know, the Saturday night people are out laughing, dancing, mad, half drunk, half, you know, crazy people. And Parameshwar just, he's a very cool person, he just stops them and speaks to them. And they, they just, he just makes them serious. He doesn't smile or laugh at all. Just a, just a little slight smile. Parameshwar Prabhu, yeah. Very, very grave. People, all of a sudden, they just they just forget they're in San Diego to enjoy, and they just he, they just become very grave, and within 30 seconds or so, they take a book. It's amazing. Um, Brigupati Prabhu in Los Angeles, you must have, you know, he's been distributing books all his life. He's over 60 years old now. He's out every day, including Sunday, and he's just convinced that in course of time, as Prabhupada said, these books will have their effect. And uh, it seems that it must be so. <coughs> because if, if we see the world as it is, as, as it is, the whole society is extremely confused. People are extremely confused and unhappy. Here's another anecdote. Purnachandra Maharaj told me. He was living in uh, London in an apartment this, close to the temple. He's in his household, and um, in the next door there was some young woman who every weekend she'd have a different boyfriend stay overnight with her. So you know she was young, and beautiful, and having a good life and all this. You know. So one time they just were both leaving or entering the houses, the apartments at the same time. Cool. He just spoke to her a little bit. Said something like, oh, "You have a very uh, active life," and she, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Then he looked her in the eyes and said, "Are you happy?" And she just burst into tears. That was her response. <laughs> that, that that question good. just hit her, and then she she realized she's not at all happy and doing everything to be happy. So the whole world is very confused. Um, in America and Britain, especially in the uh, in the intellectual world, or what's called the intellectual world, there is a um, there's this big debate: intelligent design uh, versus Darwinism. And although the uh, the Darwinists uh, dismiss proponents of intelligent design as being unintelligently designed. Um, <laughs> Uh, it appears that they're under a lot of pressure. The, the, athe the, the atheistic scientist, scientific bloc is under a lot of pressure. And persons, uh, particularly Richard Dawkins, is the high priest of atheism. Sorry, Richard. Dawkins. 
professor at Oxford University whose life's mission it is to refute uh, to or to promote atheism. Actually, he considers religion a blight on the world. Right. Blight is like um, just like you get a lot of uh, just like if you have an invasion of little insects that destroy all your crops. Now to uh, a scourge. Um, and he's right, actually. <laughs> I mean, any intelligent person would have to reject that um, uh, there was uh, someone ate an apple, and as a result, all the cause of human suffering is because a long, long time ago, to quote the fairy story, someone ate an apple. <laughs> and uh, God came, and then they killed him. Uh, he was dead for three days, and then uh, he came back to life, and then he went off somewhere, and he's coming back soon. And, and at that time, all the uh, Darwinists will be thrown into hell forever with no chance of redemption by the all-merciful, all-loving God. So, uh, practically, if you had to choose between these two viewpoints, it would... I mean, they're both stupid, but atheism might... I mean, if you say that's God, it seems almost more sensible not to believe in God at all. But on the other hand, the scientists, accredited scientists, are giving evidence that the idea of life coming into being by chance, it's unscientific. But then they want to go, then if you have to accept that there's a God, then you have to go back to this infantile Christian philosophy you have to go back to that that's the alternative either either you're an atheist or you believe in this it's infantile but at the same time it's the cause of so much suffering in the world I mean Christianity is, you know, it's, it's, it's all the violent slaughterhouses inquisitions crusades it's all coming from the Rich Abrahamic doc. traditions but Krishna consciousness presents Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana, scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead. So we actually have the answer, which, which is it's it's scientific and it's and religious and not dogmatic. Uh, if, if the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam gives a a, a, a very a scientific and uh, astounding presentation of the supreme reality, and um, <coughs> apart from that, there's also the the distribution of Prabhupada's books, especially all over the world, is uh, enlightening people of the fact that there is reincarnation, so that we find more and more that people they do understand, they accept at least at least theoretically the possibility of reincarnation. So, uh, this a very favorable atmosphere actually for preaching Krishna consciousness is being generated all over the world by the widespread distribution of Srila Prabhupada. The, the widespread chanting of the holy names, which unfortunately isn't so widespread as it should be, or holding so festivals like Rasi Atra. So, the fact is that this, these activities are having their effect. And... Um, it's what the world needs. We have what the world needs. And if presented by devotees in a, uh, in a reasonable manner, uh, many people will accept that, yes, this is, uh, this is actual knowledge. It's knowledge of reality. And actually there is great opportunity, we're seeing that, for preaching Krishna consciousness everywhere. No. That uh, practically everywhere in the world, many, many people are... Uh, open to, at least open to accept that the devotees, they have something good to say. Srila Prabhupada very much, he personally liked to preach to intellectuals. So he awesome. formed the Bhaktivedanta Institute for preaching to scientists and philosophers. Pima. So if this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana, scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead, is uh, intelligently and systematically presented in society, then uh, actually the world can change very soon. So both for the uh, internal health of our movement and for external preaching, we have to present 
what is in Prabhupada's books, the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. And not only is there no need to present anything else, but it's a great distraction and therefore a crime to do anything else. I'll qualify that statement. And it is a it is a distraction and a crime unless it is necessary in a specific preaching field. Just like in Hong Kong, uh, it's very difficult to preach to the Chinese because they're, they're, they're very atheistic people. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj introduced the uh, teaching yoga, and by by giving association to people, gradually they made them devotees. And the whole endeavor of the Bhaktivedanta Institute is to, or is supposed to be, to present uh, the principles of Krishna consciousness presented in a scientific and philosophical manner, in a manner that scientists and philosophers will accept, so that they can gradually come to accept the principles given in Srimad Bhagavatam. But for general preaching and for preaching among our devotees, it, it has to be Harinam, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam discussed among ourselves and propagated to the public. And this is what people are looking for and what they need. People might be interested in gems and astrology and all this thing, but it's not, it, it's not what they need and it won't solve their problem. Similarly, people come to our devotees, they come to these camps and we can, uh, we can give them some kind of... Uh, mental massage by giving them some make make yourself feel good kind of kind of seminar but the real treatment is the treatment of the soul which is affected by effected not affected effected actualized by uh, hearing and chanting about Krishna in the manner given by the six Goswamis and by all the Acharyas after Srila Prabhupada Nothing else will satisfy the soul. So our preaching should be on this basis, internally and externally. On this basis. Kamasya nindriya priti yavat jivata yavata jivasya tatva jivyasa narto yascheha karmi bi. Life's desire should not be for grati- for gratifying the senses. Life should only be for the sake of understanding what is the truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's activity. So this is a very powerful message. Okay. Which if, if people, if they can just be touched by that, then they can understand the seriousness of this movement. If we uh, study any verse from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, immediately if we can understand what is the depth? What is the seriousness? What is the profundity? So Srila Prabhupada uh, preached from the very beginning with faith that people could understand this message. Srila Prabhupada's immediate audience was not a very likely audience for understanding Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Oh. Drugged out, sex crazy, mayavad hippies. So Prabhupada okay. spoke Bhagavad Gita as it is to them with the faith that uh, this can touch them, it will change them and it did if Srila Prabhupada had gone to the west and taught anything else then we wouldn't be here and the reason if people are not coming newly it's because we're not teaching what people need to hear if we speak the message of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam then Krishna will send devotees if we speak anything else, then devotees won't come. People who are, uh, have any sincerity to understand the truth, they will not be attracted. They, they, they can, even in their uh, covered state, they can understand what is substantial and what isn't. So we should stick stay, to this principle of, of speaking the truth as we have received by the great mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas received it. We should not cheat others. As the, the Prabhupada didn't cheat us and we shouldn't cheat others. If we mix up with Mayavadis, we become Mayavadis. If we mix up with Sahajiyas, we become Sahajiyas. We may, we may become envious of the Mayavadis and see that they have more Dhanjan and Sundari than us. We may think, well, we should become like them and we'll also get plenty of Dhanjan and Sundari like them. But that is not our aim. 
Ekas chandras tamohanti king nataragano picha. What is the value of having many stars? One moon is required. So, uh, if if our movement is not attracting many people, it's not because uh, that the Krishna. There's something wrong with Krishna consciousness. He should not imitate or associate with Mayavadi. As Srila uh, Prabhupada told the story, the, the rabbit once, the, the female rabbit once said to the tigress, I, I, she said, I have three litters every year and each time ten children and you have, you have one baby every two years. <laughs> and the tigress said, yes, but my child is a tiger. <laughs> so, what's the use of collecting? Collecting a bunch of useless people. If we teach useless things, we get useless people. If we teach the truth, then we get genuine people. And that will have its effect in course of time. Because the truth is very powerful. The truth is Krishna. Krishna is more powerful than all of Maya put together. So if we're in contact with the truth, that, that is very powerful. One Acharya, they can change the whole world. Jagat, Tarete, Shakti, Dhare, Jane, Jane. All the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, every single one of them is powerful enough to deliver the whole universe. So let us have faith in that principle. If we uh, deviate from what Prabhupada has given, then we lose his mercy. And then uh, so many problems. The only problem, as Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati Thakur said, the only problem, the only lacking in the whole universe is Krishna consciousness. There's no substitute for Krishna consciousness. You, you, you can't just uh, dilute it, alter it. No. We, have to, we can't ask Krishna to change, a, or we can't adjust Krishna to the way we want him to be. We have to adjust ourselves to the way Krishna wants us to be. That is the meaning of surrender. All these new age groups, they're very spiritual, seemingly spiritual. Cocktail spiritualism. Actually, cocktail spiritualism. There's no surrender. You just, you take a little bit of this, you take a little bit of that, you mix it up the way you like. And you just feel spiritual. This is all cheating. This is mundane. It's not spiritual at all. Actual spiritual life means surrender to Krishna. Prabhupada always spoke about surrender to Krishna. And he taught us day and night why we must surrender to Krishna. If we surrender to Krishna, Prem will automatically come. But if we don't surrender to Krishna, we can talk Prem, Prem, Prem day and night. There's no, there's no real Prem. It's just a bluff, that's all. So these are all simple principles to understand. There's nothing complicated. It's very straightforward. There is the Supreme Controller. We are controlled. The Supreme Controller is Krishna. Krishna. We have to surrender to Him. That is our constitutional position. That is our entrance into happy life. That we have left because we don't surrender to Krishna. There's no alternative. This chakra, that chakra, <laughs> stand on your head, study the Tibetan Book of the Dead, go on some special purificatory diet, take plenty of antioxidants. <laughs> but there's no substitute for surrender to Krishna. But it's heavy, it hurts, because we have our ego which we identify with. We don't like to admit, I'm a fool, I'm a rascal. So we think it's much nicer if we go among people who tell us, oh, you're all very wonderful. But our real friend is someone who tells us, you're a fool and a rascal. And not just tells us like some kind of thug in the street, but shows us why we are fools and rascals and teaches us how to stop being fools and rascals by surrendering to Krishna. That's what Prabhupada did. That's what we should do. And if we don't do, then everyone feels very happy. Superficially, just like the tourists at the beach are superficially happy, but it's all a cheating process. So that's why at this camp we don't uh, we don't accept this suggestion. That why have so much philosophy, and uh, we should just have bhajans and some nice talk. This suggestion is not accepted here. It is accepted as a cheating proposal and rejected. 
if you want, there are plenty of camps like that. You can go there. But at least at this camp, we're not. We're going to discuss philosophy. So if you don't like it, you know, you came here by car. You can leave here by car, and we'll go on discussing the philosophy as Prabhupada taught us to do. And the result of that is that we will actually become happy, and we will become qualified to serve, to properly serve Prabhupada by uh, communicating that message to others, which is the only method for their actual benefit. Lokanam hitakarino tribhuvane manyo sharanyakaro. The six Goswamis, they can be taken shelter of by the whole world because they acted only for the benefit of the world by presenting actual, genuine principles of religion on the basis of Shastra. So we sang a bhajan. It's not that we're not singing bhajan. But then we should try to understand what is what is the meaning of that bhajan. It's not, just some, it's not just some nice song with a nice tune. Okay, so we're supposed to have RT at 6.30, was it? 7, is it? Oh, okay. hmm? 6.30, that was the idea. So we'd have time for the uh, program afterwards. What's the program after RT? There will be a small sketch after drama. But today is 7. Today is 7, and from tomorrow it should be at 6.30. All right, I don't want to take any questions, because then I was speaking in a philosophical way, but then people come and say, what do you think about this and that? And then uh, then I have to criticize some devotees. And so that I'm speaking in a general way here, and you can understand what I'm saying. Just take it and try and understand it and apply it as you see it. See oh. through the eye of Shastra. So we'll finish that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.